This is CNN Night reporter Chris Morrow behind the camera at the San Diego Comic Fest, the very first one with Mike Towery. He's also one of the founders of Comic Con. How's it going? Oh, it's going pretty good. Talk about the concept of this convention. Uh, it's trying to get back to the kind of conventions we used to have, the, the smaller conventions, um, more intimate, kind of the, the camaraderie and, and low-key informal nature we had where the, the various guests, the artists, the writers, the filmmakers would just sort of be there to hang out and kind of um, interact on a, on a more equal level with the fans. I am Scott Shaw. I'm a cartoonist. Uh, grew up here in San Diego and I was one of the kids that started Comic Con on the committee. And uh, obviously, it's grown to a massive size. It's still the best event of the year. I plan my whole year around each one. But it's nice to be here at the San Diego Comic Fest because this is much more uh, of an example of kind of how we did things in the early days. Of course, now we've got the uh, the benefit of experience, so we know a little bit more. But but this is a a great way to see kind of what it was like when we were, things were more intimate, things where there, there wasn't a, a corporate uh, uh, or multiple corporate uh, presences at the convention. This is more about the people that, that love comics because they make them and people love comics because they read them and sometimes they're both the same person such as myself. Barry Alfonso and we're at the Town and Country Convention Center for the San Diego Comic Fest. When I was 12 years old, I ran an advertisement in a penny saver free newspaper looking for comic books. And through that, I heard from Shel Dorf and Richard Alf. And I put them together. And when the three of them got together, they brought in um, uh, Richard's friend Mike Towery, and uh, a guy named Bob Sork, and a guy named Dan Stewart and myself, and we uh, met in uh, Shell's parents' apartment, and that was the beginning of the San Diego Comic Con in about September or October of 1969. Talk about this one now, and, and how are they similar in a little way? I think that the 40th anniversary reunion uh, in 2009 of the San Diego Comic Con inspired some of the old timers like Mike Towery to see if they could recreate the original spirit of the event in something that was small and intimate and allowed the creators and the fans to have more of a chance to get to know each other and speak to each other the way it was in Comic Con in the 70s. I'm Jamie Newbold. I own Southern California Comics here in San Diego. I have been doing Comic-Con, uh, the one downtown, since uh, 72, and being as I've been around that long, uh, when I walked into this room here at the Comic Fest, it remarkably is similar to what I remember from 30 some odd years ago. The simplicity, the lack of women, the old guy selling comic books, it looks a lot like it did in the past. Well, I'm having a great time at, at uh, Comic Fest. I was actually an attendee at, at uh, some of the earliest of the, of the Comic Cons, and it's, it's really uh, great to see that uh, tradition here. I enjoy the modern Comic Cons too, but here, here, here at Comic Fest, it's uh, definitely a, a, a very, very good recollection of my experiences from long ago. I have my copy of it. I want it. Hi, I'm Stan Sakai, and I'm the creator of Usagi Ojimbo. It's a Samurai Rabbit series. I have been doing this for going on, let's see, uh, more than 28 years. And Usagi's been around uh, on in print. He's also been on TV as a guest of the Teenage Mutant Ninja well, Turtles. See, I have been going to Comic Con since 1977 or 78 when it was still the El Cortez Hotel. And Comic Con's grown quite a bit. <laughs> when I first started going to Comic Con, it was uh, about, oh, maybe 4,000 people in attendance. And it was very intimate. You could actually talk to the, uh, the creators there, these guests. You could have meals with them. And, just hang out with them at poolside and comic fest is very much like that you know people come up to you it's a much smaller convention you don't have the big crowds and you can talk one-on-one -on -one to the fans and right now i'm actually working on pages uh, of from uh, 47 ronin and you know, i can't do that at comic-con 
And here people get to see the process of my pencils or my uh, my inks. So it's 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 a very nice it's a very different experience from the uh, the mayhem that is Comic Con now. My name is Paul M. Salmon, and I actually am a person who went to the very first Comic Con, uh, what's now called the San Diego Comic Con, in 1970. And over the years, that has grown into this massive event with hundreds of thousands of people and major um, coverage from the motion picture studios and so forth and so on. However, um, I think it got to a point where it became so big that a lot of the people who were originally involved in it thought that it was becoming a bit too corporate and a bit too overwhelming. So in a sense, the San Diego Comic Fest, of which uh, you're seeing uh, going over my shoulder right now, is a, uh, almost the anti-Comic Con. Uh, it has got a cap of 1,000 people. Um, it is intentionally um, geared towards the environment and the feeling of the original small Comic Cons of the early 1970s. So there's really a conscious effort here to turn the clock back to the early days of fandom, keep it intimate, keep it small, and keep it friendly. Okay. Hi, I'm Dave Clark. Uh, I am a, uh, an, a uh, member of uh, one of the original founding members of the San Diego Comic Convention, which we started uh, in uh, here in San Diego in 1969-1970, and I was uh, just uh, completing high school at that time. The San Diego Con Comic Convention at the El Cortez Hotel uh, was a wonderful, uh, intimate event with just a few hundred people, and yeah, at that time you had total access to talk to anybody that you wanted, no matter how famous they were. You could just sit down, like at this little convention, and the idea of uh, of this convention is that it be intimate, that we be able to go up to and talk to anyone that you're interested in talking to, and a free exchange of ideas. Nobody has to stand in any line. Uh, everybody gets a seat, and. Uh, this is uh, the most like one of those early conventions that I've been to in a great long time. The things that are stressed in there, the, the values that are put forth, and the, kind, the character of the men who are saying that, uh, if you want to meet one of those. I'm Ophelia, Ye, and you're an artist. You've also been to Comic-Con, and now you're at San Diego Comic Fest. What's the difference? Well, this uh, to me is much better. Um, the Comic Fest represents a uh, return to um, a convention honoring the artist and the writer. If we limit the audience to those who really read and really pay attention to the artwork, I think we're going to have better conventions in the future. The San Diego Comic Con is really big and you know a lot of people, but it's mostly about um, movie stars, TV stars, and nobody argues that they're going to get a lot of people, you know, Angelina Jolie, but I, I argue, okay, so, you know, what, how does that help an artist or a writer? What kind of responses are you getting? It seems pretty positive. Everybody's really enjoying it, and I'm getting, you know, comments from people saying, yeah, this is really the way it used to be. Thank you.